All right, how did an A-10 Warthog beat an F-22 Raptor in a dogfight? You heard me right. A few years ago, these pictures surfaced online of an A-10 Thunderbolt II, also known as the Warthog, sporting an F-22 kill marking painted on the side of its fuselage. Now, this obviously didn't happen in a real fight. This happened in an air combat exercise, but it is nonetheless impressive that this low and slow ground pounder of an aircraft managed to take out the reigning king of the skies. But you might be surprised to hear that this sort of thing actually happens fairly often, maybe not always with F-22s, but certainly with other fighters. You see, the A-10 was not built for air-to-air -air combat. In fact, it really was purpose-built around its massive 30mm GAU-8 Avenger rotary cannon. Now, that cannon is all about engaging targets on the ground, as is the majority of the munitions carried by the A-10. But that doesn't mean it has no air-to-air -air chops. In fact, that same 30mm cannon can be deadly in a close quarter scrap, and A-10s usually carry a pair of AIM-9M Sidewinder infrared-guided or heat-seeking air-to-air missiles to boot. Now, in real combat operations, the A-10 would usually be flying in concert with air superiority fighters, like the F-15 or the F-22, and it would be up to those fighters to take out any inbound adversary aircraft. But that doesn't mean you won't ever get what they call a squeaker, a fighter that makes it through that combat air patrol and goes after the Warthog. Now, in those circumstances, Warthog pilots have really only one option. Their aircraft is far too slow to ever outrun a fighter that's bearing down on them. So, you gotta turn and fight. And believe it or not, in those circumstances, the A-10 can hold its own. Now, the A-10 may be slow, but it also has an extremely tight turn radius. In fact, it can outturn the F-22 in most circumstances. And as a result, the A-10 has the best chance of orienting its nose at an adversary aircraft to get a shot in with that cannon. And as Colonel Danny Gator Yunt once said of his own A-10, other pilots have to respect the gun. But even if other pilots are smart enough to stay clear of those guns, the pair of AIM-9M Sidewinder infrared-guided air-to-air missiles carried by most Warthogs are enough to take down enemy aircraft And while I can't tell you exactly how that A-10 in particular took down an F-22, I can tell you that I've spoken to enough A-10 pilots over the years to say that that's likely exactly what happened. But what you really need to know when it comes to these engagements is it's not like an A-10 and an F-22 squared off in a fair fight. Instead, these kinds of exercises are designed specifically to put the more capable platform at a significant disadvantage. Now that gives A-10 pilots the opportunity to train in a unique set of circumstances, where they're trying to press an advantage against a more capable aircraft. But it also gives the pilots of those more capable aircraft, like the F-22 or an F-16, a different set of unique challenges, where they find themselves, say, staring down the barrel of an A-10's 30mm cannon and needing to make quick decisions to get themselves out of that predicament. Now, this is no different than when you see UFC fighters training from the disadvantage, having their opponent start in the full mount. The whole idea is that you need to get yourself uncomfortable in training so that you are comfortable in the fight. So how did an A-10 take out an F-22? Well, if it was a one-on-one -on -one air combat exercise, the A-10 may have even started out right behind the Raptor, at which point all it needs to do is secure a lock, whereas the Raptor pilot needs to frantically shake it. But it also could have been in a large-scale air combat exercise, where there are dozens or even hundreds of aircraft operating in the same airspace. And in those sorts of circumstances, it's not hard to accidentally find yourself inside the, say, 10-mile engagement range of a Sidewinder missile from an attack aircraft 10,000 feet below you that you weren't paying much attention to. This is why situational awareness is so important for air combat pilots, because there are threats all around you, and they can manifest from where you least expect it. So, did an A-10 beat an F-22 Raptor in a dogfight? The answer is almost certainly yes. But would that mean the A-10 is better than the F-22 at air combat? Of course not. It just means the air combat exercises were organized appropriately for everyone to get something out of the training. 
Now extrapolate that lesson to other stories you've heard about F-22s losing to Eurofighter typhoons or Filipino F-A-50s. The reason you heard about those stories at all are because even with the deck stacked against it, the F-22 still almost always comes out on top. And when it doesn't, it's headline news because anomalies make for good headlines. 